In this video, we are going to discuss Vogel's approximation method for setting initial feasible solution for the distribution of electricity from three power plants and one external network to three cities, for which initial feasible solutions were set by using least cost cell method and northwest corner cell method. The two main reasons for using the same problem in all these three methods are the first reason is to figure out the differences and similarities between the steps of these methods. The second reason, to compare the quality of initial feasible solution obtained by each of these methods, which is measured in terms of minimizing the transportation cost. Here is a problem. Three electric power plants with a respective capacity of 20, 40, and 30 million kilowatt hours supply electricity to three cities. The maximum demands at the three cities are estimated as 30, 35 and 25 million kilowatt hours respectively. The price in bar per million kilowatt hour at the three cities is given in the table below. During the month of June, there is a 20% increase in demand at each of the three cities, which can be met by purchase of electricity from another network at a premium rate of 1000 bar per million kilowatt hour. The network is not linked to city one. The utility company wishes to determine the most economical plan for the distribution and purchase of additional energy. The question is determine the initial feasible solution by using Vogel's approximation method and calculate the resulted total cost. Before proceeding to the steps of Vogel's approximation method, we have to construct transportation tableau because transportation simplex method uses transportation tableau for setting initial feasible solution and for optimizing initial feasible solutions. So let's construct the tableau starting from the cost matrix. The given cost matrix contains three power plants as a source and the three cities as destination, and the unit transportation costs for the transport of electricity from the source to destinations. Additions to the cost matrix in a bit to translate it to transportation W are the force source and its unit cost, the supply from each source, and the demand of each destination or each city. So let's add each of them step by step. The fourth source can be represented by adding a fourth row because a row represents a single source. As it is mentioned in the problem, the external network is not linked to CT1, so no unit cost to be mentioned under the column standing for CT1. The unit cost for the transport of electricity from external network to each of CT2 and CT3 is given as 1000 bar. Supply has to be designated as this right hand margin of the cost matrix and the supply from each source is given as plant 1 supply is equal to 20 million kilowatt hour, plant 2 supply is equal to 40 million kilowatt hour, and plant 3 supply is equal to 30 million kilowatt hour. As it is mentioned in the problem, purchase of electricity from external network is needed to offset the increased demand on the month of June. Hence, additional power needed from the network is 20% of the total demand, meaning 0.2 times the sum of the three demands, that is 30 plus 35 plus 25, which is equal to 18 million kilowatt hour. Demand of each city is expressed at the bottom margin of the W. When we say demand, we mean the increased demand, that is original demand plus its 20%. Demand of city one is equal to 30 plus 0.2 times 30, which is equal to 36 million kilowatt hour. Demand of CT2 is equal to 35 plus 0.2 times 35, which is equal to 42 million kilowatt hour. And demand of CT3 is equal to 25 plus 0.2 times 25, which is equal to 30 million kilowatt hour. This is a complete transportation W, and it's a balanced one because total supply is equal to total demand. Since we can proceed to set initial feasible solution by following the steps of Vogel's approximation method. Step one. Identify the two lowest costs in each row and column of a given cost matrix and then calculate the absolute row and column difference. We can portray row difference between the two lowest costs, also called row penalty at this right hand margin, and column penalty or the difference between the two lowest costs of each column at this bottom margin of the W. The lowest cost in row 1 is 400 and the second lowest cost is 600. So the difference between them is 200. The lowest cost in row 2 is 300, and the second lowest cost is 320. Since 320 minus 300 gives us 20. The two least costs in row 3 are 450 and 480. 
So 480 minus 450 gives us 30. The unit costs in row 4 are equal, that's 1000, hence the difference between them is 0. In moving to column penalty, the least cost in column 1 is 300, and the second least cost is 500, so 500 minus 300 gives us 200. The least cost in column 2 is 320, and the second least cost is 480. Hence, deducting 320 from 480 gives us 160. In column 3, the least cost is 350, and the second least cost is 400. So subtracting 350 from 400 gives us 50. We calculate all the row and column penalties. So let's proceed to the next step, that's the step 2. Identify row or column with maximum penalty and allocate as much as possible to the variable with the least unit cost in a selected row or column to the amount equal to the corresponding sales supply or demand, whichever is the minimum. If two or more rows or column have the same maximum penalty, then we can choose the same in a tied row or column that can receive more assignments. For such tied rows or columns, some scholars recommend to use either of the tied rows or columns. But for getting a better initial feasible solution, it's recommended to choose a cell in the tied rows or columns that can receive more assignments. This step two is by itself a combination of five sub-steps. Sub-step one is choosing a maximum penalty among all row and column penalties. Sub-step two, choose a row or column that contains this maximum penalty. Sub-step three, selecting the least cost in row or column with maximum penalty. Sub-step four, comparing supply and demand corresponding to the selected least cost sale. And sub-step 5 is allocating the smaller one from the corresponding supply and demand to the selected least cost sale. If tied among the calculated penalties exist, one more sub-step will be added, that's selecting the tied row or column that can receive more assignments. In this case, the maximum penalty is 200, Row 1 and column 1 are on tie with this maximum penalty. So let's compare the assignments that can be allocated to the least costs of column and row on tie. That's row 1 and column 1. The least cost in column 1 is 300. Demand corresponding to this least cost cell is 36. And supply corresponding to it is 40. So the smaller one from these two that can be allocated to the selected least cost cell is 36. In row 1, the least cost is 400. The smaller one from the corresponding demand and supply that can be allocated to this cell is 20. 36 is more than 20. Hence, the cell in the tied row and column that can receive more allocations is the one at the intersection of row 2 and column 1. And the amount that can be allocated to this cell is 36. After such allocation, we will continue to step 3. That's reduce row supply and column and demand by the amount allocated to the selected least cost cell. Deducting the allocated 36 from the corresponding demand and supply reduces the demand from 36 to 0 and the supply from 40 to 4. The rule of surcharge deduction is that if all the supply is consumed, reduce it to 0 and eliminate the corresponding row from further consideration by drawing a line through it. We can't eliminate row 2 because plant to supply is not reduced to 0, rather 4 million kWh is left unconsumed. The other requirement is that if all the demand is fulfilled, reduce it to zero and eliminate the corresponding column from further consideration by drawing a line through it. Column 1 has to be eliminated from further consideration because city 1 demand is reduced to zero. The fourth step, stop the procedure if supply at each origin is zero, that's every supply is exhausted, and demand at each destination is zero, that's every demand is satisfied. If not, repeat the procedure from step 1. The supplies from the three plants and from the external network are not yet consumed. And also demands from CT2 and CT3 are not yet satisfied. Thus, we have to proceed from step 1 by calculating all penalties of undeleted rows and columns. We have to use only two undeleted columns. Hence, row penalty is simply the difference between the unit costs of respective columns, meaning Row 1 penalty is equal to 700 minus 400, which gives us 300. Row 2 penalty is equal to 350 minus 320, that gives us 30. Row 3 penalty is equal to 480 minus 450, which is equal to 30. 
and rho for penalty is equal to 1000 minus 1000 that gives us zero when we come to column and penalty column and two penalty that's the difference between the two least costs of column and two is 160 the two least costs in column and three are 350 and 400 deducting 350 from 400 gives us 50 the maximum penalty is 300 since row one is an next row to receive allocations the smaller one from the two undeleted costs in this row is 400. Supply and demand corresponding to this cell are 20 and 30 respectively. 20 is less than 30. So the amount that can be allocated to this cell is 20. Subtracting the allocated 20 from the demand at the bottom reduces the demand from 30 to 10. Also, subtracting the allocated 20 from the 20 million kilowatt hour supply of plant one reduces the supply to zero. We have to cross out row one because plant one supply is completely consumed. Let's continue to allocate the unlined rows and columns starting from step one, that's calculating row and column penalties. Row two penalty is equal to 350 minus 320, which is equal to 30. And row three penalty is equal to 480 minus 450, which is equal to 30 again. And row four penalty is equal to 1000 minus 1000, that gives us zero. Column and two penalty, that's 480 minus 320, which is equal to 160. And column and three penalty, 450 minus 350, which gives us 100. 160 is the maximum penalty. Thus, column and two is the next column to receive assignments. The least cost in this column is 320. Demand corresponding to this cell is 42, and supply corresponding to it is 4. So the amount that can be allocated to this cell is 4. Deducting the allocated 4 from the corresponding demand and supply reduces the demand to 38 and supply to 0. Plan to supply is reduced to 0 since row 2 has to be eliminated by drawing a line through it. In continuing to calculate the row and column penalties of uncrossed rows and columns, row 3 penalty is equal to 480 minus 450, that gives us 30. And row 4 penalty is equal to 1000 minus 1000, which is equal to 0. Column and two penalty is equal to 1000 minus 480, that gives us 520. And column and three penalty is equal to 1000 minus 450, which is equal to 550. The maximum penalty is 550. This column and three is the next column and two is allocations. From the two undeleted units cost in this column, the smaller one is 450. Supply corresponding to the sale is 30, and demand corresponding to it is 10. Thus, 10 has to be allocated to the selected six cost cell. Subtracting 10 from 30 gives us 20. And subtracting 10 from 10 gives us 0. Column 3 has to be deleted because CT3 demand is reduced to 0. The only undeleted column at this stage is column 2. Hence, no need to calculate penalties. Rather, we can directly proceed to step 2. Thus, selecting the smaller units cost in this undeleted column and continuing allocations. 480 is the smaller unit cost in this column. Demand corresponding to this cell is 38 and supply corresponding to it is 20. The smaller one from these two that can be allocated to the selected list cost cell is 20. Deducting the allocated 20 from the corresponding demand and supply reduces demand from 38 to 18 and supply from 20 to 0. Row 3 has to be eliminated by drawing a line through it because plant 3 supply is reduced to 0. The cell at the intersection of row 4 and column 2 is the only undeleted cell. Unsatisfied demand and supply corresponding to this cell are equal, that's 18. Allocating this 18 to the select cell reduces both CT2 demand and external network supply to zero. All the supply and demand are reduced to zero. Hence, this is the initial feasible solution we are asked. Resulted total cost is equal to Occupied cell in column 1, that's 36 times 300, plus Occupied cell in column 2, that's 4 times 320, plus Second Occupied cell in column 2, that's 20 times 480, plus The third Occupied cell in column 2, that's 18 times 1000, plus Occupied cell in column 3, that's 20 times 400, plus The second Occupied cell in column 3, that's 10 times 450, 36 times 300 is 10,800 plus 4 times 320 is 1,280 plus 
20 times 480 is 9,600 plus 18 times 1,000 is 18,000 plus 20 times 400 is 8,000 plus 10 times 450 is 4,500. The sum of these values gives us 52,180. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the initial feasible solution for this same problem was prepared by using least cost cell method and northwest corner cell method. And the total transportation costs obtained are 50,180 and 56,520 bir respectively. The transportation cost as well as occupied cells obtained by using Vogel's approximation method and least cost cell method are similar, but those from northwest corner cell method are different. The 52,180 bill total transportation cost obtained by using this cost cell method and Vogel's approximation method is less by 4,340 bill from the 56,520 bill total transportation cost obtained by using Norway's corner cell method. In other words, the quality of initial feasible solution obtained by using this cost cell method and Vogel's approximation method is better than the quality of initial feasible solution obtained by using Northwest corner cell method. In comparing the similarities and differences among the steps we followed in these three methods, we can witness the following. The only difference is the criteria we used in selecting the cell which receives allocation. Northwest corner cell method selects the Northwest corner cell. This cost cell method selects the smallest unit cost among all the given unit costs. And Vogel's approximation method goes through three steps. That's Calculating penalty cost, selecting column or row with maximum penalty, and selecting the least unit cost in row or column with maximum penalty. The other steps, that's selecting the amount to be allocated to the identified least cost cell or northwest corner cell, reducing the allocated amount from the corresponding demand and supply, and eliminating row with zero supply or column with zero demand are similar in all these three methods. By this, I wrap up this section. Have a nice time.